Hi everybody, Carolyn Cummings with News For You TV. Just hanging out in front of Penny Lane and sipping on some chai because I ain't got nothing better to do. Hopefully you don't either because we've got a little bit of everything for you this week. First, the freak gets in touch with his inner animal as he heads out to the Vanderburg County 4-H Fair. I have an exclusive sit down with Who Wants to Marry a Millionaire alum, author and comedian Rick Rockwell. Charles heads to the land of Lincoln, where he meets up with the phenomenal cast of Fiddler on the Roof. But before we get to the Fiddler, we got the Riddler. He hangs out with the extraordinary jam rock band, Jeb. Sit back and hang out. The Riddler here for News For You TV. We're out at the Deer Head with Jeb. Tell us about the new CD. New CD, 13 tracks, all original music. Took about a year and a half to record. Having a CD release party next week? Yes, at the uh, Duck Inn. At the Duck Inn. Yes, in Headway, a local group. I just heard them today. I'm giving them a shot, and they're going to open up for us. They're pretty good. going to start early, so everybody comes back from out early. Uh, 9, 9.30. And what day is it? Saturday. Saturday? Second. Saturday, August 2nd, the Duck Inn Jeb CD release party. What's the best thing about getting back to Evansville? Best thing? Yeah. Our own bed. Yeah. yeah. Bed. Sleeping in your own bed. New CD is $15. $15. And you can buy it at any Jeb show any or Jeb at show. cdbaby.com. CDbaby now, if someone Jeb. comes out and buys a CD, what, what can they expect to hear from you? Kick ass, original, Indiana cornbread, funk and roll. Funk and roll. No, funk and roll. For, for everybody out there who may not have heard a Jeb show yet, what you know, what's going to grab them on this CD? Um, on the CD, man, there's a little bit of everything. We got we got a six-piece horn section on the CD. We got some keyboards. We got some uprights. We got some kick-ass guitars, thump and bass. It's all the whole the whole package. A lot of the songs are very diverse too. I mean, it's like every lots of different styles. We're all influenced by a bunch of different styles. But all of them. Pick it segment. The you pick it. Yep. I fire off two choices. You just pick the first one that comes to your mind. Yeah. Like uh, Michael Jackson, Prince. Prince. Uh, Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons. Paul Stanley. Paul Stanley. Gene Simmons. Yeah. Freddy Krueger or Jason. Freddy. 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 Yeah, that's, that's yeah. coming out. What? Yeah, that's a good movie. Uh, Yosemite Sam or Elmer Fudd? Elmer Fudd. Oh. <laughs> he killed the wabbit. Uh, he killed the wabbit. I don't know. I'm a big Yosemite Sam fan. Yosemite. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all for us here tonight at the Deerhead, listening to Jeb, getting pumped for their new CD release party, uh, August 2nd at the Duck Inn. Be there.
4-H has been doing amazing things for the youth of the nation for years. Well, this year, the freak headed out to the fair to see what he could learn. Let me tell you, I think they should have gotten him a few years earlier. Freak out! Hi, everybody. This is the freak on the street down here at the 4-H Center for the Vandenberg County 4-H Fair. We can do a little rides, a little livestock, and a little, uh, little food. So come along. We'll have a good time. 4-H. Is anything like Triple H? Probably less steroids somehow. I don't know. The thing about the 4-H fair is you get to see the animals live and up close. Hey, want a quacker? No thanks, I'm stuffed. <laughs> There's uh, more cocks here than at a porn store. Do you, uh, do you know the uh, Colonel's secret recipe? If you come to the fair, be smarter than me. Sandals and livestock don't mix well. There's a joke here somewhere, but if I tell it to you, I think the Riddler would get a little upset. Now, there's nothing really funny to say about llamas. They're just sort of inherently funny on themselves. I mean, they're kind of like fuzzy camels without a hump. So, uh, the way I understand it, you guys don't have to, uh, you know, wait until you, uh, you know, get back on the horse, so to speak. I was wondering if there's, there's a secret or something you can help a brother out with. We don't have any buyers or don't laugh at me. I see you mocking me. Don't laugh. Congratulations, ladies. Beautiful women on tractors. Couldn't possibly be any more Southern Indiana than that. Unless we had beer in a bucket. Just think of the countless hours this kid spent raising wrestlers by hand. And how do you make them so tiny? Hey, that's a display. Yeah, so I'm a conservative hippie. So what? You got a problem with that? Hey, by the way, who's ever heard of that five-second rule? Food on the floor? Yeah. Yeah, five-second rule. You know what? That's probably okay. Because I have a feeling that the floors in your house are a lot cleaner than any cast iron stove. Thank you. A slice of pizza. Um, what kind of pizza? We have cheese, sausage, pepperoni. Pepperoni would be lovely. Pepperoni, please. And the big corn dog. I think maybe next year, maybe next year I'm gonna be, gonna be smart. Oh, oh God, oh Lord, oh. Maybe next year I'll be smart enough to, uh, to eat first, or eat, oh, to, to ride first and then, and then eat, cause I'm not feeling real well. I, oh, oh God. Oh, Lord God. Oh, somebody help me.
Our very own Charles headed up to the Lincoln Amphitheater to meet with the exceptionally talented cast and crew of Fiddler on the Roof. This theatrical group is made up of cast members from all over the nation and they will truly keep you mesmerized under the stars. Let's check it out. Hey guys, it's Charles from News for You TV. I'm standing here with Mike Turek, star of Fiddler on the Roof out here. He's playing Tevia, right? Yes. Tevia is the fiddler? Tevia is not the fiddler. The fiddler's on a hot tin roof, the though. The fiddler is on a hot tin roof, yes. The music is always happy. It's always fun. It tames the beast. Sometimes, yes. Is Tevi a beast? Uh, he can be. Yeah? He can be, but you know, he's, he's really got a big soft heart. <laughs> he's just a lovable kind of guy. I mean, he's a dairyman, so. A dairyman? Yeah, it's you know, kind of hard to be. A, a, Does that mean he delivers milk or he likes milk or drinks milk? A little bit of both, actually. So he's got milk, I right? think, yeah, he does. He's got <laughs> milk, yeah. 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 Hey guys, we're sitting here with artistic director of the Lincoln Amphitheater, Elliot Wasserman. Elliot, how are you this evening? I'm good. I'm Excellent. Good. We're getting ready to watch Fiddler on the Roof. Well, that's good because that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing tonight. We're Fiddler doing. On the roof. Oh, good, good. I wasn't Some sure about Young that. Young Abe Lincoln. Young Abe Lincoln, which is not tonight, but it is every other night. Uh, actually, not this season. Uh, this season, you have to check the schedule because uh, we'll do Fiddler for a couple of nights and then. Uh, young Abe for a couple of nights. We broke it down that way so there'd be fewer changeovers because there's a very, very elaborate set. need to stress that um, although USI is the producing organization, the Summer Theater is both New Harmony Theater mm -hmm. uh, and the Lincoln Amphitheater are both professional theaters. And uh, I travel all over the United States uh, auditioning people and bringing in talent. Uh, a lot of our talent comes from New York, some from LA. Uh, we, do, we, we do get some college students uh, uh, in chorus roles, um, but most of the principals are professional actors who have been out there for, for a while. So uh, people that come out and actually make the trip out from Evansville, and they, they, they see what we've got out here, often they're just amazed because they had no idea. So I'm trying to, I don't want to be, a, I don't want to be the best kept secret. I want people to know that there is big time professional theater out here uh, under the stars or under the roof. This is the real deal. People coming from all over the country to, to perform for you. And all you have to do is come out and see it. <laughs> Yeah, the talent is phenomenal, uh, and, and really somebody, is. somebody is getting ready to go from here to L.A. Yeah. Now, first right. of all, we've had a number of actors who've been here who've subsequently gotten uh, film roles. Uh, uh, Missy Pyle is probably the, the, the most well-known from our group who's been in a number of films. Uh, she was in uh, As Good As It Gets with Nicholson. Mm -hmm. She was in uh, Galaxy Quest uh, with uh, Tim, whatever his name is, I can't think of his Tim name. Allen. Tim Allen, yeah. Um, oh, we've had oh. a number. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but we've had a number. We've had a number of, uh, of actors uh, make it to Broadway. Uh, we had one in uh, Hal Prince's uh, Showboat. Uh, another in Beauty and the Beast. Wasn't there someone in Rent? That yeah, was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Shana Steele mm -hmm. uh, went to Rent. She went right from this show here to Rent. Yeah. Um, so you're the so breeding talented. ground. I, for we super are the breeding ground. But, but we've got a, we've got one in this in this show who's um, going to have a continuing role in the fall on the Wanda Sykes show. It's a funny show. see the show it's Fiddler on the Roof show times are at 730 Wednesday through Sunday alternating with the young Abe Lincoln historical drama um, you can check the schedules with uh, USI theater as well as uh, do you guys have a website 
Yes, we do. Uh, Lincoln-Amphitheater.com. Lincoln-Amphitheater.com. Right. Or dial, or, or just call, uh, you can call the office in Evansville, 465-1668. And the box office is 1-800-264-4ABE. Uh, -A -B -A -B -E. Come see the show. It's a fantastic production. I'm Charles, this is News for You TV, and we're out. If I were a rich man, I'd have deal that way, but do we get to the dog? All day long, night, pity, pity, bum. If I were a wealthy man. Exclusive sit down with author, comedian, and veteran of media mayhem, Rick Rockwell. Let me tell you, I was surprised to find out that there is a whole lot more to this man than Darva Conger and reality TV. Why don't you see what I saw? Hey everybody, Carolyn Cummings with News For You TV and I'm actually doing an interview. I feel like such a big girl. I am at Funny Bone with Rick Rockwell, famous American artist. You may have seen some of his work. <laughs> I feel like such a big boy. Oh wait, that's Norman. <laughs> Norman Rockwell, this is Rick Rockwell. You may recognize him as well. He uh, had his own television show. Some people may have seen. My first question... Which is a real part of the fabric of the all-American quilt, you know, that you alluded to earlier. Well, I, I actually heard a joke when they put out that reality movie that mm -hmm. nobody went to see recently. It, it said that shows you exactly what people are willing to pay for reality entertainment. Nothing. I, They'll watch it on TV, but they're not going to pay for the movie ticket. I think you get what you pay for, too. Absolutely. Yeah. My first question is, how sick are you of questions about the TV show and the marriage? I'm not. In fact, I'm going to give you $30 to ask me some of the best questions you've got about the entire show. So the title of your book is What Was I Thinking? Yes. Does, does that pretty much sum it up? The whole. It really does pretty much sum it up because uh, I approach this thing with very good intentions and I am such a bonehead because, you know, in the aftermath and of course having 2020 hindsight now, I look like the world's biggest idiot. and. I was before I was just the world's biggest private idiot. Now I'm the world's biggest uh, public idiot. I can't even say it. That's how big an idiot I am. <laughs> so through the book and and you know buying yeah. some BMWs for some counselors, did you figure out what the hell you were thinking? Uh, yeah, I put two and a half years of research into that book, and um, we have a copy of it back there. I should I should break it out, but you know the book is not about right and wrong. The book is about what is, and it's about the kind of world that we live in right now. So it's funny because I've had this book I've given to close friends when it first came out, and they've had it sitting on their coffee table. And for instance, one couple's brother came to visit, and he had, didn't know anything about the story. And he said, what's this? And he started reading it, and he stayed for the weekend, and he could not put the book down because he was fascinated by what happens. So you don't have to know anything about the story or you can know all about the story or think you know all about the story. And that's what makes the book, I think, compelling for everyone is that it's not a book about Rick versus Darva. It's not a book about reality TV. It's a book about the world that we live in right now. And it just happens to be an example of what's going on around us every day. You have aspirations to be a writer before all of this happened or, or was it did you just need to get it out no I was a writer and I've been a writer I uh, have sold several screenplays comedy screenplays before all this happened which you wouldn't know if you if you sequel to the attack of the killer tomatoes that's I right no but that's right <laughs> well the funny thing was um, you know when I first did this the headlines were this guy's not a real estate mogul he's a comedian and then three weeks later, I announced I was doing a comedy tour. And hey, he's not a comedian. He's a realtor. And I'm not kidding you. I literally saw reports like that. So it was an absolute you cannot win situation. Right. Um, you just, whatever I did, it was going to be wrong. And um, it's one of the funniest things that came out of it was I said to people, you know, if I had known what a jerk I was, I would have stopped hanging around with myself a long time ago. <laughs> and... Uh, it's really directly proportional to to how much time people spent with me when I would do interviews. If it was on the phone, then they were more apt to diss me because they would just go with what their original supposition was. And if they spent a little time with me, their article would tend to be more favorable. And if they spent more time with me, 
then it would actually be more sympathetic. So it was, it was really interesting to see that the human component of it was having some impact on, um, on the people who were reporting about it. So it, it, was, it was a bizarre place to be. Uh, it was, you really cannot appreciate what it's like to become the news, I think, until you, until you do it. And I think this book would get you as close to that, those feelings maybe as possible. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. You are so pleasant. Oh, thanks. You're You're really nice. Once again, this has been Carolyn Cummings and News for You TV, just hanging out at Penny Lane. Going to give you just a few of my favorite things this week. One is chai tea. Another, the hay pile pickers. I saw them at Landhux, and they were incredible. And blue filters, because it's a cool kind of light. So you guys have a cool kind of week, and I'll see you later. If you got anything to say, email me at carolyn at news com. Till then, hang out. August 2nd at the Duck Inn. Be there. Peace out. Hi, this is Rick Ronco from Who Wants to Marry a Multimillionaire? I like news for you TV so much, I bought the station.